feeding time. <laughs> What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. And whoa, whoa, Artemis Fowl was not going to say that it was foul. It was terrible. Legendary bad. Like, probably top, top three worst movies I've ever seen. Maybe top two. And there are movies that I've seen that are just bad, kind of, you know, or, or they're like not that great and then they have a terrible ending. This movie was just 90 minutes of awfulness, disjointed scenes, unending, over, uh, over narration of, of the film, just unlikable characters, no stakes whatsoever. I'm supposed to care. I'm supposed to care about some of these characters and it is abysmal. It is Pepto abysmal. And look, three months ago, I predicted this would happen. By the way, membership drive this week. We have 450 backers on the subscribe star. If you've been following everything going on on Twitter, I'm not really talking a lot about it, but a lot of people are trying to get sponsors to drop me and some maybe even have. So I've now rededicated myself to providing additional content here on Subscribestar, which is a free speech Patreon alternative. I'm gonna leave a link in the pinned comment below. I really hope that today will be the day you take just a minute to consider backing if you so choose. Now, three months ago, I made this movie, a video. Disney destroys a beloved franchise, Artemis Fowl movie will tank. The movie was well received with 125,000 views and 8,300 upvotes. This was mostly how Disney's reimagining of the Artemis Fowl character was bad. A betrayal to the original fandom was really the reasoning I thought this movie would fail. And to my surprise, it failed for completely different reasons. This is a film that had a $125 million budget. This film had a trailer that if you watched it, Almost nothing from that trailer was even in the movie, like, at all. You know how sometimes you see a, a movie trailer and then you go see the movie and you're like, oh, they had all the good parts in the trailer. Well, this film was, I was like, where was all the stuff from the trailer? Like, the entire characters completely missing. Uh, the kid, the kid that plays Artemis is absolutely, unequivocally terrible. Now, I'm sorry for Dia Shaw. You're just a little, he's just a little baby. I know he's just a little kid. I'm not going to like, you know, he just wasn't ready. Really more shame on Disney for putting this kid uh, in the spotlight when he clearly, clearly wasn't ready. Colin Farrell in this film, why he was in it for like eight seconds. The narration, the voiceover, just awful. Way, 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 way too much of it. This will now... At the time when I talked about why this film would fail, I laid out several reasons, most of which was the uh, betrayal of the original fandom. The we know better at Disney. We know better than the actual fandom uh, attitude, which has failed so many times before. In particular, we saw this with Ghostbusters 2016. Um, other films, The Golden Compass, legendarily bad, also lost money from what I can remember. Uh, Percy Jackson, 50%. Also, legendarily bad. Now, you might be thinking, wow, those movies were bad. Very bad. And they lost money. How do we think Artemis Fowl fared? 50%? 40? Surely it can't be 30. No. It can't, it can't be, it can't be lower than 20. That's that's no. A Disney movie? Lower than 20? Impossible. What? You're gonna tell me it's closer to no, no, 10%! 10%. 10! 10! From Disney! Could you imagine what a colossal embarrassment this film would have been with a full theatrical release? They have a better chance of tricking people into seeing this movie simply because it's on Disney Plus than ever ever have had than they would have had releasing this film nationwide just just look at some of the some of the critics let's say glossy and empty exercise in world building it's 90 minutes of barely established characters doing half explained things with mysterious objects the failed harry potter wannabe replaces the naughty fun of the original authors about a 12 year old criminal mastermind with a dramatically inert and emotionally empty film facsimile 
12 minutes into the movie, Colin Farrell goes into a helicopter, flies away, and in retrospect, we can't blame him because it's nearly all downhill from there. I mean, they turned a criminal mastermind into this, like, spy kids superhero type film. And it's just awful. One funny line about gluten and dirt shooting from Josh Gad's butt. Do not make for groundbreaking material. We cry foul on such an awkward display of unoriginality. Not even the global situation could save us from Artemis Fowl, the worst movie of 2020. Artemis Fowl. I mean, what? I, there's only 10 people that certified it fresh. Top critics. Warm and funny and entertaining. Chicago sometimes. Really? Really? Oh, good. My laundry is done. Nothing. Nothing about this film was true to the Artemis Fowl book. Nothing about this film was positive. And when you see the critics and the fans both agree at just how abysmal a film is, there's really nothing else to say. Here's some audience. Artemis follows a popular children's book series that has scores of fans and have been anticipating a film adaptation. But I have to say they expected more than this. The Artemis Fowl movie directed by Kenneth Branagh um, from Murder of the Orient Express, so he's done some good work, became a casualty of Disney's purchase of Fox Studios, and in the wake of everything going on right now, they decided to drop the film straight to streaming. Good idea. This has been a strange year for new movies, from studios releasing some of their anticipated films early on demand to straight up selling the rights to streaming services. Disney must not have had any faith in Artemis Fowl because nobody thought twice about going to see it in their streaming service due to theaters being closed anyways. Well, they've officially dropped their newest original film, and I admit I was mildly curious. There's no beating around the bush here, though, because the film is just really, really bad. All around. All around. And these are some long user reviews. Congrats, Disney. You ruined another beloved franchise with your lifeless live-action sequence and your money-hungry executives. If you're a fan of the books, don't watch this movie. An extravaganza of inept storytelling. The Artemis Fall books are in no way literary masterpieces, but they manage to develop rich and robust characters that feel really engaging. This movie takes a, a tried and tested story and tears away its charm, uniqueness, and antagonistic wit to produce a disjointed, confused, semi-story. And you can see even the critics here write these. Review. Artemis Fall is here, and finally here, and boy, are you going to be disappointed. Scrubbed, sanitized, and neutered of its edgier elements. Artemis Fowl, the movie, likely will be unrecognizable to the books to many fans. Gone is the hard-boiled dialogue, the anarchist wit, and psychopathic avarice of the protagonist. Heck, he's not even a villain or an anti-hero anymore. He's just another super kid trying to rescue his father. And they got the symbol, similar like MacGuffin. Here's a shiny thing. The whole movie's about getting the shiny thing. Then things happen while you have a shiny, people are looking for the shiny thing. Then bad things happen We're on the shiny thing. Then good things happen on the shiny thing. And then the movie ends. I mean, that's, that's essentially what it is. I don't know what this is supposed to be either, to be honest. But I mean, it sounds like Artemis Fowl is a recognizable name, so people are gonna love it. That's a good point. The tale is largely told by one uh, Mulch Diggums, Josh Gad, a, fair, a fairly unreliable narrator, who we come to learn is a giant dwarf, or at least he thinks one. Yeah, that's right. In the film, he was made fun of for being a tall dwarf. I mean, that, that was the storyline. That he was an outcast for being a tall dwarf. In Artemis Sr. is a dealer in antiquities, suspected of stealing valuable ancient artifacts from around the world, and his secretive behavior supports that notion. A scholar of Irish legends, particularly leprechauns, banshees, sprites, and goblins, he's passed this lore on to his son, audaciously training him in the ways of the world, but at age 12, young Artemis has become skeptic. There's not a lot of originality here. In their black suits and sunglasses, blasting fairies out of the sky, Junior and the butler look like an intern edition of Men in Black, Gad's mulch could be grimly relative of Hagrid from Harry Potter. The militarized fairies recall the tech-savvy owls in animated movies such as Arthur's Christmas and Prep and Landing. There's a been there, done that, feel, seen that, sorry, to the whole enterprise. The no-knock on Shaw who plays Artemis with measured intensity and seriousness, but the screen version of the character is pretty bland. He surfs, he rides some hoverboard through the nearby woods, and then shows disdain for authority figures at school. But he's simply not that interesting. Though the movie tries hard to convince us otherwise. We were repeatedly told he's an off-the-charts genius, but the results play more as a clever and resourceful. Granting someone a tragic backstory does not 
a character make. In one very on-brand Disney twerk, tweak, twerk, ha, they've killed off Artemis' mother, Angeline. She merely suffered from debilitating mental illness in the books and made her absence the point of his sullenness. It's not a but the book was better argument. It's simply that abandoning the original character and cobbling together broken story shards and spare parts uh, that the director and company have produced something off assembly line, safe, generic, and utterly disposable. So I thought this film was going to fail simply because of its abandonment of the original story. And I think I was only partly right about that. Ultimately, this film failed because it is bad. Caught in development purgatory for years, Disney probably knew that this film would be a disaster at the box office. And if they release it on the streaming service, they don't have to publicize their numbers. If they put it on Disney Plus, they don't have to tell us how it really does. And I think ultimately this film will lose millions, millions of dollars. $125 million for what? Over a million dollars a minute for this film. And it's an unmitigated disaster. 31% on Metacritic, 3.9% on IMDb, 10% on Rotten Tomatoes. Actors like Julie Dench, Josh Gad, uh, you know, they couldn't save it. The movie was awful. And thankfully, thankfully, uh, we see it just released quietly into the abyss that is Disney+. Plus. Now, we saw Scott Mendelson talk about this back in May. Artemis Fowl could lead to more bigger budget Disney Plus movies. I'm going to guess that it won't. I'm going to guess that this was a disaster. Now, it's an interesting thing, though, with kids' movies. Sometimes a new kids' movie... It's just an auto buy for parents and kids are, don't have the same, you know, discriminatory taste as maybe a fan of the books would be. And so maybe the film will still do well on Disney plus, but it's been universally panned by fans and critics alike. I'm going to have to say this one's a disaster. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.